In this video, you will learn how to create an energy bar graph to describe a story or a situation in physics. This first page is something that I'll reference throughout. You may want to pause and write down these steps so that you can refer to them in the later parts of the video. But I will talk through each of these steps in the examples that follow. The first thing that you want to do when you're drawing an energy bar chart is to identify the system. Sometimes it'll be identified for you as it is in this problem so you can see the system boundary is already set up here. Um, but in other times you'll have to figure it out and sometimes there's more than one way to solve a problem and it could look a little bit different depending on what's in your system. So you're specifically saying I'm going to focus on and in this problem it looks like the little toy, the spring, and the earth are all going to be part of our system. So as you can see, I've written those three objects inside of my system diagram here. And it's really just a definition so we all are on the same page about what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing that you do is decide how energy is stored in your system at each point. It's easiest to just take one point at a time. So starting in picture A, so this picture right here, um, we consider each of the possible ways that energy can be stored. Nothing is moving, so there cannot be any kinetic energy. The object is at its lowest point in the whole problem, so there's not going to be any gravitational energy. And I like to write a reminder to myself that we have defined this point the lowest height in the problem is the point where gravitational energy equals zero. So put that there as a reminder to yourself at wherever the lowest height is in the entire problem. And the last thing is elastic energy, energy stored as elastic energy if there's a spring that is stretched or compressed. And in this case, there is a spring right here that looks like it's being compressed by the toy that's on top of it. So it looks like the only energy storage we have here in this part of the problem would be elastic energy. The height of the bar that you draw is not important. Next we're going to look at the second picture. In the second picture, it looks like the spring is no longer compressed because the toy is not sitting on it and the coils have kind of moved apart. The toy is up in the air now. But we've got this little V equals zero, which means the velocity is zero. Since the velocity is zero, there's not going to be any kinetic energy. The ball has moved above the EG equals zero point, so there will be gravitational energy, but there's no elastic energy. That means that all the energy that initially was stored in the spring has now been transferred to the gravitational energy bank account. It is important to show the idea of energy conservation, and we've done that so far because all the energy that was initially stored as elastic energy is now stored as gravitational energy, and we've represented three blocks worth of energy in both position A and position B. Now we're gonna consider position C. At this point, the toy is falling back down. The spring looks like it's not compressed, but the toy is moving. The toy is not at gravitational energy equals zero. It's above that point. So because the block's moving, there's going to be some kinetic energy. But there's also going to be gravitational energy because the block is still, or the toy is still above its lowest point. The spring is not compressed, so there will not be any elastic energy. Now you could do this a couple ways. I put two on kinetic energy and one on gravitational. It could be the other way around, one kinetic and two gravitational. The important idea, what we're trying to communicate with these bar charts, is that the total amount of energy at the beginning is equal to the total amount of energy at any point in a problem. Energy is conserved. Finally, we're going to use our energy bar chart to write an energy conservation equation. It's basically mathematically expressing what we've expressed in pictures with this graph. Next, we'll use the energy bar chart to write what's called an energy conservation equation. We're basically going to use an equation mathematically to represent the idea that we've re represented in pictures with our bar graphs below. So starting with position A, we have all elastic energy, so we're going to call that elastic energy at A, E, E, 
at position A. That's equal to, at position B, we only have gravitational energy. So the elastic energy position E, or A, is going to be equal to the gravitational energy at position B. And for position C, here, it looks like we've got kinetic and gravitational energy. So we're going to write that as E K C plus E G C. And important to note, we're not saying that the gravitation, this gravitational energy and this gravitational energy are two different amounts. We've shown it in our bar graph because 3 is not equal to 1. And we've kind of differentiated here by putting the B and the C subscripts. But the sum of the kinetic and gravitational energy at point C will equal the total amount of gravitational energy at point B. All right, we're going to look at one more example. This time, the system has again been defined for you. The system is the ball plus the floor. The ball is going to roll along the floor and eventually come to a stop due to friction. That's going to be important in solving the problem. So first, we've identified our system as the ball and the floor. We're going to write that in the circle to represent what's in bounds and what we're focusing on this problem. Then we're going to look at each position and decide how energy is stored at that point. For position A, the ball is moving. It doesn't seem to be changing height, so the gravitational energy equals zero point is going to be at floor level. And um, there's no springs involved, so there's no elastic energy. So at position A, it looks like we only have kinetic energy in this story. And again, the total number of bars that you draw isn't really important. It's going to be important that you show the idea that the total amount of energy at position A is the same as the total amount of energy at position B. Next, moving on to the second point, position B. The ball is moving, but I notice these little whooshes are a little bit smaller, and it does say in the story that the ball is going to eventually come to a stop. So that means that the amount of kinetic energy is less because the ball has slowed down. The ball hasn't changed height, so there can't be gravitational energy. There's no spring, so there can't be elastic energy. So that begs the question, what happened to the rest of the energy? Well, when there's friction in a problem, or when all the other forms of energy had to have gotten smaller, and there's nowhere else for the energy to go, that's when thermal energy is going to be involved. There's thermal energy here, because as the ball and the floor rub across one another, the particles of the ball and the particles of the floor are going to be moving just a little bit faster. You might even hear a sound because those particles might be vibrating a little bit. And we're going to just lump together energy generated by things rubbing together, and we're going to call that thermal energy. So because the amount of kinetic energy went down, and we know there's no gravitational energy and no elastic energy, there must be some energy that transferred into the thermal energy bank account. Finally, at position B, or C, the third position, the ball has come to a complete stop. So there's no kinetic energy. The ball is still on ground level, so there's no gravitational energy. And there's still no spring, so there's no elastic energy. Therefore, all the energy that the ball originally possessed must now be stored as thermal energy in the ball and the floor. Well, in this example, by writing the energy conservation equation, for position A, there's only kinetic energy, so we're going to call that EKA. At position B, we have kinetic energy. At position B, and we have E-therm for position B. Notice, again, the kinetic energy at position A and the kinetic energy at position B are not the same. We've represented them with a different number of bars. And in calculations, they will not be the same. It's the kinetic energy has gone down because the ball has slowed down. But the total kinetic and thermal energy at B does equal the kinetic energy at A. And then for position C, we'll have E therm C. So you could say, since you've got 
several equal signs here that all the kinetic energy at the beginning will equal all the thermal energy that's been generated by the end. But here's your second example. Now it's time for you to practice on your own.